Hello there. So, carrying on from my last video, when we created this visualization, what I want to show you how to do is a simple little trick, not a trick, simple little functionality, where you can turn this visualization into this visualization. And it's pretty straightforward. So, first thing I'm going to do is actually just delete this slicer, because I want to ensure, see obviously now this value is really high, don't worry about that. And I'm also then I'm going to go to my filter pane and I'm going to say on this particular visualization, I only want to see the top five players. So exactly just what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to go name. So here in this visualization, top n, so top five, right? And then of course the value that we've been using and then apply. So now we only have the top five players. Obviously that completely depends on what you want to create, but this is to get what we have here. And then I'm going to make this visualization just bigger. So when we finished it, it all fits on that one visual. So now we have that, I can go and replicate what I've done here. So if you've watched the previous video, you should know all of this already as in how we created this visual. If you haven't seen that video, of course, go back and watch it now, and then you can come back to this video. All good. So what we need to do actually is just simply a facet. We need to take these values, everything that we have here, and I want to facet them, which is to say I want to basically spread them along like that and display them all by the name of the player. So in order to do that, of course, what I also need in this visual is the name of the player. So I need to have this value brought in as well. So I'll go back to here, my web name, and I'm going to bring that also into my visual. Now it starts to look a bit strange because obviously it's starting to break that down inside that one visual. So to achieve this, what I want to do is here before my layer starts. So between my data and my layer, I am just going to paste this in. And this is my facet. So I'm saying a facet by a field, which is the web name, the value that I just brought in, and give it a data type, which is ordinal. Now, I can then choose to close that off, just like that, and do that. When I've done that though, between my facet and my layer, you have to do this when you're doing a facet that has multiple layers. All I'm gonna do here is just type the word spec and then do that. And then I'm going to open a curly bracket and then go to the very bottom where my layer ends. And then I'm going to close that off. And now you'll see when I apply that change, we have something that looks like that. So obviously they don't look the same. Well, why is that? Well, because I've chosen dif different sizes. Yeah, so these all have much smaller sizes. These circles are a lot bigger. Also, you'll see things like the text size here for each um, for each of the facets is, is very small. So here, it's nice, much larger, it's easy to read. So we need to change a couple of things. So the first thing I'm gonna change is just the size of each visual here. So I can just go here and adjust my radius, just make it smaller here, make that 55 and make just, this is also for this, the circle inside as well. Let's say 53.5, gonna make that change. And as you'll see, they're now a lot smaller. We're also having of course different with the text sizes, but also you'll see there's a big difference in the padding between each one as well. It's because the padding is also kind of predetermined. That's set up somewhere. Maybe it's my config. Yeah, see if you look here, I have my padding of 60. So I can just change that to something smaller like five. So immediately looks a lot better. And then also I want to change my text size, make it a bit smaller. So 25, I'm going to make it 14. These are of course just changes that you can choose to make yourself depending on how you want it to look. And also here, because I made the radius smaller, I'm going to make this radius a lot smaller as well, say 80. See how that looks. That looks fine. Maybe just make it 85. I'm just play around with these values. So this isn't looking perfect, but it's looking a lot better. 
So the main change thus far has just been adding this facet, the field web name, and then the spec. But we can also make other changes because I want to make this title text a lot bigger so it stands out more, all that kind of thing. How do we do that? It's really straightforward. So here, what we've done is facet, and then we've closed it off. But I want to change that a little bit. I want to put some other stuff in there. So what I'm going to do now is, is paste in some values, and we'll go through them quickly, but then easier just to show you by applying the changes. So I've pasted in this within my facet, which is specifying the header values. So it's going to say my title font size is 16. It's going to give it a color and then also the label font size and the label padding. So I apply those changes and as you can see, it immediately makes it look clearer because these are my label fonts. And see so if I was to make that 16, they would be bigger still. Let's just stick to 14. My title font size is 16. So if I change that, for example, to 18, it would look like that. So you can see, you can change the title of the facet itself and then the label on each of those facets as well. So something like that. But it's really cool that you can make it stand out exactly how you want it to. This label padding is really helpful because if I just get rid of that, you can see that there's a much bigger gap between the, the header and the pie chart itself. So I set minus 20 because I want those things to be closer together. I think it looks a lot better. So if you want to specify how many rows or columns that are actually in your facet, you can just do that actually outside of your facet. So here where the facet ends, if I just paste in here, columns three, for example, it'll give me a facet with three columns. So if I apply that change, you can see now I've got one, two, three columns. If I say columns two, I'll have two columns. Yeah. If I type zero, for example, it'll take me back to what it was before. So actually, if you wanted like that, you wouldn't have to enter that value at all. So it really depends on how you want it to look. So what I want to do also is to sort it. And I want to put that in my facet here before I get to my header. So in between here, my facet and my header, I can just put in here, sort. So I'm sorting it by obviously the value, which is a selected percentage, and I'm saying order descending, put in that change, and now you can see they are now sorted by value highest to lowest, which looks a lot better. That's it. Nice little way of displaying that, looks really good, very effective, and it makes a good visualization even better. Hope you enjoyed it, let me know what you think, like, subscribe, all those things. Thank you very much, take care. Goodbye.